It's Premiership final time, the teams have been selected and in this video I'll go through the choices, discuss the matchups and give you my prediction for who will become Premiership champions this coming Saturday. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel, going to be here with you to the end of the season and beyond so hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now then, rugby cliches, I love them and they come around in, in phases. The current one this season seems to be we earn one more week together and that's what both these teams have been speaking about this week. By winning their semi-finals, they get one more week together as this team, as this group of individuals and um, they get to do it at Twickenham. Massively exciting. The games between Bath and Northampton during the season came out at one win each. Uh, each team winning at home with Bath with a huge win actually on the final day of the regular season. But nothing much should be read into that really. Northampton were very much rotating and looking forward to a home semi-final. So I think even honours even throughout the regular season uh, and nothing much to be really gleaned from, from what happened then. One of the big things in the build-up to the final is which team, which kit the teams are going to be wearing. Northampton came out very early in the week saying they'll definitely be wearing their home kit. I think they get that choice as being the um, the highest ranked, you know, finishing first in the league. So they're in their home kit and Bath have announced that they will be wearing their home shirts. Now I'm questioning what colour shorts they're going to be wearing. Maybe they'll be forced to wear white shorts so they don't clash with Northampton. But I don't know, I love all the stash questions, I love all the kit discussions, but I'm not sure, I don't like the mix and match side of things. There was one match earlier this year where Newcastle had to wear something like their away shirts, their home shorts and their third team socks, and it just looked like a mess. So I don't know, maybe I'd prefer Bath to just wear their second team kit rather than a first team shirt and then different colour shorts. Anyway, into the detail of the game itself. And the teams selected are... Exactly the same. Exactly the same as their semi-final selections. I suggested that might be the case in the preview video, which I will link just up there for you. Um, yeah, you get to this stage of the season, they know who their best 23s are. They know who their best players are. And aside from slight potential tactical variations, depending on opponent or, or form of fitness or whatever, then really you want to be picking the same team as you picked in the semi-final. I did say that maybe Bath might go with Josh Bayless ahead of Barbary, um, but they've stuck with Barbary. He didn't have the best game in the semi-final, but I think they back him. I think if he plays near his best, then he's going to be vital for them getting go-forward ball. Also uh, for Bath, Matt Gallagher, uh, is uh, it's going to be his final game for the club before he heads off to Italy. And good news for him this week, he's just been selected in the Italian national squad for the first time ever. So congratulations to him on that. Northampton, and uh, again, obviously, same 23. But Phil Dowson this week has been speaking about a Saints first attitude of the players who are frustratingly for them and sadly for them not involved. He sort of commended what a huge squad effort it's been this year for Northampton to get this far. And he said the attitude of the players not selected uh, this week and previous times has been first class. So that speaks of a very strong club culture there, which will go a long way to helping them be successful. Also this week, George Furbank uh, interviewed. He sort of talked about the nervousness there was in the semi-final week and during the semi-final uh, again, that's something I alluded to in, in the preview video. Um, and this week, just excitement in training. And he said, actually, they've had to really kind of wind it back a little bit and just calm everybody down, which is great. I think that's the way it should be. You know, if you're not extra excited during in during Premiership final week, if you're not there, then, you know, what are you doing it for, really? So that's outstanding. And he also um, is expecting a big performance this weekend he just senses that everything's building to this fantastic crescendo um, which again is the way it should be uh, referees uh, because this of course it's great for the teams it's great for the players and all that kind of stuff but this is recognition for the referees as well so congratulations to Christoph Ridley who is refereeing his first premiership final 
this weekend. He did a brilliant job in the semi-final last week. Uh, he'll be assisted by Luke Pearce and Anthony Woodthorpe. And TMO will be Tom Foley, who I'm a fan of. I don't think he's one of these... He's not too fussy in the TMO box. He, he's quite matter-of-fact and, and uh, doesn't just pick up on every little thing. So I'm ha very happy with this refereeing team and I wish them best of luck on Saturday. Now then, what can we expect to see in this game? Again, as I mentioned in the, in the preview video, these two teams match up so incredibly well, really. Like if you go player for player, they're very similar in the way they set up and the way they play. Both teams like to move the ball, but they've got real guts up front as well. So a couple of things that I want to pick out, and this is former Worcester teammates and good friends, Ollie Lawrence and Finn Smith. Now, not exactly head to head, but you know for sure Ollie Lawrence is going to be sent up Finn Smith's channel multiple times, particularly off the back of lineouts. And uh, Finn Smith, I think, is possibly the best defending 10, certainly out of the English fly halves in the Premiership. However, stopping Ollie Lawrence or even just delaying him a little bit is such hard work. I think that's going to be a real key thing we'll see. Bath scored in the semi-final last week off an Ollie Lawrence carry-up, and it's going to be key for them. Can Finn Smith dominate that contact against his mate and knock him backwards just enough to stop Bath's flow. I think that'll be a real key thing and might may, maybe a key factor. Another matchup that I want to pick out, and this one is big. This one is head-to-head. -head. Benno Urbano against Trevor Davidson. Uh, loose head for Bath against tight head for Northampton, and both have had very good seasons. Also, Benno Urbano at the moment looks like a man possessed to me. He was dominant in the scrum last week, aggressive, really going after it. And Trevor Davidson's been rock solid for Northampton this year. This year, So can Benno get after big Trev? Can he get into that Northampton scrum and destabilise it? If he can, that could, again could be a massive thing for Bath. Another head-to-head -head that I want to pick out is Barbary. Number eight against Augustus. Can Barbary find the form? And I've been wondering about him. He's played throughout his career in such fits and starts due to injury. I just wonder whether he's now he's getting this huge run of games, whether it's actually going against him in terms of form, whether he's just not used to performing week on week on week on week. There's a certain pressure that comes with that on a fatigue, both physical and mental. So I'm just questioning whether that's the case and that's what's happening with him at the moment because his performances have not been is rambunctious, bustling best. Augustus, on the other hand, is coming into this game in fine form. He got beat more defenders in the semi-finals than any other player and Saints really rely on him for a lot of go forward. So that's a, going to be a key matchup there at number eight. And then lastly, I think if Saints are going to win this, they're going to have to keep Finn Russell really quiet throughout the game. Some teams have been able to do it. Some teams have been able to put... Pressure on the breakdown. They've been able to slow Bath's ball and just limit the amount of opportunities that Finn gets because he likes to just look. He likes to look. He likes to wait until there's a perfect opportunity for him to go and exploit one of the weaker defenders. Can Saints take those opportunities away from him? And key person in that, I mentioned the breakdown at the beginning of this section, will be Courtney Laws, who is now an absolutely world-class elite turnover king. In his last game ever for Northampton, will he be able to affect the breakdown? Will he be able to get in there, turn the ball over or slow it down to stop Bath attacking and stop Finn Russell orchestrating things for Bath? These are the key things, I think. Uh, these are the things that are going to define this game and see who walks away as Premiership champions. Um, however, just one last thing. Just looking at the benches, I think Northampton are probably stronger across the bench I think their bench has probably got a bit more experience. I think they've got more people who can come on and change a game if it needs to be changed. So I think it, maybe if it's tight getting towards the end and the benches do come on and they're forced to you know, have a big factor on this game, I see Saints maybe being slightly the stronger in the later stages. But that's what I see it and I can't wait to watch this game on Saturday. It's going to be an absolute banger. Weather's looking good. Both teams are fit full of their stars. I suspect we're going to see a real classic Premiership semi uh, final this coming weekend and I can't wait. 
I'll be doing a brilliant uh, or big review video of it afterwards where I analyze what happened, who won and why. So make sure you come back to the channel to watch that one on Saturday night or Sunday. Um, but what do you think? When do you think the game will be won and lost? Any players that I didn't mention that you think will play a big factor? Any tactical choices that I didn't pick out that you think each team may implement? Do you think we see any trick plays? That often happens in finals, you know? These teams have analysed each other and played against each other all season. Do you think one of these teams is going to pull something out of the bag that they've saved for this big occasion? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you don't mind. While you're down there, it helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.